We are back at it again for another Freedom Friday. Come on in the room. I am excited to have you with me this morning. So listen, uh, I need you to invite, like, share, and tag someone for this amazing uh, opportunity to share. Uh, I'm getting ready to tag some people myself. So let's go ahead and get ready for... Um, as they say, let's get ready to rumble. As they say, in, in these, as they say in wrestling, let's mumble, rumble, rumble. Um, as they say, let's get ready to rumble. All right, come on in the room. Come on in the room. I got a lot to say, and not a lot of time to say it. So come on in the room. Come on in the room. On in the room. Come on in the room. And if you like, share, and tag uh, someone in this morning's Freedom Friday, and invite, share, and tag. Invite, share, and tag. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Welcome to another edition. It's Freedom Friday. As I said earlier, I am so excited to be back. Um, I was out last Friday. Just time got away from me, and I was so exhausted. So I said I had got to take self-care first. Um, but nevertheless, we're back. And since we were here together uh, two weeks ago, a lot has taken place. There's been so much um, that we're not going to be able to unpack it all here in this setting. Um, but I need for you to know that we are in a crucial moment, not only in the world, but we're in a crucial moment with the black church. Let me say it again. We had a crucial moment with the world, and a very crucial moment in the church. Um, as many of you are all aware, uh, President Joe Biden um, had given his speech that he will not continue to be the nominee for the Democratic Party. We all know that that's been something that's been ruminating for a couple of weeks, um, but he made it official when he sent his letter on Sunday. And so I began to think about him, his exit. Um, I, be I been, began to think about for church leaders and for business owners, do you know when to exit? Or do you have to exit or leave on other people's recommendations? Um, today we're going to briefly talk about don't overstay your welcome, but leave like a boss. When I went off to college, um, my dad gave me some great advice. I um, wasn't sure why he gave it to me, but I did uh, later. He said, you and your friends ever go to the club or go out anywhere? Make sure you know the exits. Make sure you know where all the doors are. Make sure you know where you can get in and where you can get out. If you don't know how to get in and get out, he said, don't stay. <laughs> um, so to this day, whenever I go anywhere, I my surroundings is to survey the exit doors. In the event of emergency, if they tell you on the airplane, help yourself first. That means put your mask on. Reach under your seat and take your flotation device off. You've got to learn how to help yourself, but don't overstay your welcome when your exit plan has arrived. So in the weeks of President Biden, before he gave his exit speech um, and he endorsed um, now our nominee for the Democratic Party, Kamala Harris, um, there was a question that ringed in my mind. Pastors and leaders who overstay their welcome in their assignment. And what do you mean by that, Dr. Erica? What I mean is there are some people who know their time is up, know their season is up for where they are. That means they've accomplished everything God needs them to accomplish in that setting. They've done everything that God has required for them. And now it's time for them to make their exit retire, 
spend the latter day, latter of the years um, enjoying life with their children, their family, their spouse, or whoever. But many times in the black church, the pastor dies. They die out instead of them naming a successor. So what Joe Biden did for us, and I think the church needs to take notice of this, Though I know it was a hard decision to come to the decision that he would no longer stay in the race. Because at 16, while he was in high school, his aspirations was to always to become the president of the United States. And he did that. And he served in Congress. And he did that well. But I, but if you think about it, uh, I, feel, I think he feels good because he accomplished the very thing he was striving for. And I'm glad he realized that I couldn't do this four more years. Number one, I don't think his health would have held up. Number two, he's in such a stressful environment um, that I don't think that he would, be, would have been that effective. Now, I love President Biden. Biden, I think he did, did done an amazing job. But I'm glad he recognized for the good of the people I need to turn this over to someone else. And so many pastors and leaders uh, who do not know when to exit. There are a few things that happens. When you stay your pastoral season, you evoke three things. Resentment of the people and the position. And why I didn't know or recognize my time and my expiration to leave that assignment. Pastors, it's okay to retire at a decent age and enjoy your latter years. You don't have to die for someone to, to replace you. Let me say it again. You shouldn't have to die for them to, to replace you. Number two, you become disconnected to the, what the people say. And your only goal is to prepare a sermon. And that's it. Number three, you start to lack empathy. For the people. I understand your situation, but in your head, you're saying, what about my position? So there has to be some moments in time that you say it's time for me to go. Because what you do not want, you don't you do not want a bitter breakup. Have you ever been in a relationship and that breakup was horrible? Um the breakup was so bad that you was like, I there's no way that I can continue with this relationship because it's toxic. And then you wonder to yourself, why did I stay in this relationship this long? What, what was wrong with me? Sometimes we have to understand, know when to exit. And you may be asking me, well, Dr. Erica, how do I know when to leave? I'm glad you asked. Number one, when the people no longer know your sound, your voice has become foreign to them. Let me say that again. When your people no longer recognize your sound, your voice becomes foreign to them. You know, Jesus said, my sheep know my voice and a stranger they will not follow. You do not want the people to get so comfortable that they no longer know your voice because you didn't know when to exit. And then it starts to be, I'm dreading going to preach this sermon. I'm dreading going to this next board meeting. I'm dreading going to this next uh, staff meeting because you realize this is coming to an end, but how do I leave? When you leave and you want to understand that no one, the people no longer know your sound. Number two, your message has become toxic or harmful or intentionally, but not intentionally, but it becomes more about venting in the pulpit than ministering to people. I know I've been to churches and all the pastor has done during the sermon is talk about what the people have not done. They talk about the fact that you don't show up. And the whole message is that, but what about the person who showed up for church who might have been on the brink of committing suicide? Who might have been on the brink of saying, you know what? I, I do not like this. I don't like the institution. The institution called church. Because every time I come and visit church, they're always fussing from the pulpit. Nobody wants to be around a negative Nancy. Because <laughs> everything you say is negative. Nobody wants to be around you. 
You may be asking, when do I know when to leave? When the people no longer have your sound, your next message has become toxic, and it's more about venting from the pulpit. And number three, your family stops supporting you because they are tired of seeing you tired. And you feel like, who's going to save me? Who is going to save me? I'm saving everybody else. Might I ask, save yourself. I believe there are two things that President Biden showed us. Self-reflection and assessment and legacy and long-term vision. So self-reflection and assessment is emphasizing the importance of regular self-reflection to assess your effectiveness and satisfaction in your leadership role. So I believe you took a personal assessment and want to say, am I satisfied with what I've already accomplished? Even though there were a lot of things going out that President Biden is going to bow out, I believe they let President Biden do it on his own terms. Number two, I believe he did this. He encouraged leaders to recognize the signs of burnout, diminishing your passion, or a sense that they've achieved their vision and their goal. Number two, he showed the church and the business world this one, legacy and long-term vision. I believe he had a discussion about leaving a legacy and showing the continued success of the party. The highlights of stepping down at the right time can be an act of service to the organization, allowing someone to come along with fresh and new and energizing ideas. And so he did that. So he said, I believe that VP Kamala Harris can take the world, can take the Democrat Party to the next level. Now, I know some of you saying you might not like what she stands for or who she is, but can I tell you this? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes on him should not perish but have everlasting life. Jesus made the greatest exit that we'll ever have to encounter. But prior to the exit, he had to do a self-reflection and assessment in the Garden of Gethsemane. He had to go and get with his father and ask his father, God, is this really what you want me to do? Because God, I'm getting ready to die for a people who are not going to be grateful, who are not going to understand what it is that I'm getting ready to do. I'm getting ready to exit and cross over to the other side. But he said, but nevertheless, <laughs> Jesus, I'm going to take you at your word. I believe Jesus recognized I was born to die. I'm going to do this thing on my own terms. You said, but Dr. Erica, no, no, no. Judas sold him the 30 pieces of silver. He may have sold him, but Jesus understood in the beginning when he was conceived in Mary's womb, when Mary never knew a man, she was carrying our Lord and Savior, one who had promise, one who would give us hope where there's no hope, one who would give us peace where there's no peace. I believe that Jesus did and what he exemplified for us. I got to die for them. So on, on, on a Friday, they whipped him. Put a thorn, uh, a crown of thorns on his head. They pierced him in the side. But more importantly, he died for you and I on a rugged cross. For a man who never knew sin. So Jesus made the greatest exit that you and I would ever know. But the thing that I love about his exit, he did what exactly President Joe Biden did. He said, I'm going to leave you 
but I'm going to leave you something greater and even better than that. I'm going to leave you the comforter and that of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit came and said, I will lead and guide you into all truth. So don't you get swayed or pulled in by the devices of the enemy. What's about to take place in our world. We're getting ready to spend a lot of harsh ruling and a lot of things that are not going to show love. And my mantra is love is what love does. I believe that Jesus exemplified the greatest exit. My question to you today, do you know when to exit? Thank you for joining this Freedom Friday. I pray that this encounter has blessed your life. As I always do on every Friday, if no one's told you today, let me be the first to tell you I love you. And there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. Live life in the life on purpose. Have an amazing Friday.